Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. Let your name be glorified. Now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you so much. I, so I can't hear you. I love you so say, neighbor, I love you so much. You are wonderful. Very, very good neighbor. Very, very good neighbor. You, are so you are so wonderful. Everything about you is wonderful. Even your spiritual life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. But I don't understand your spiritual life. <laughs> Today is up. Today is up. Tomorrow, is Tomorrow is down. Wonderful man. Wonderful. Thank you. Have your seat. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, I don't understand your spiritual life. Today is up. Tomorrow is down. In the morning, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. In the evening, you say, Good morning, uh, good evening, neighbor. You say, Who do you greet as neighbor? Come and get out of my sight. But very early in the morning, you were the one that was singing, Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. You even show your hand. He's on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. In the evening, they will say, Brother John, how are you? I hope all is well with you. Are you my landlord to check me? Come and get out from my side. <laughs> so, you see, your spiritual life is up. Before you turn like this, it's down. What is the cause? Ask your neighbor, what is the cause of that? Today you pray. Tomorrow you don't pray. What is the cause of that? Say neighbor, I know you want your spiritual life to be up forever. But in the morning, it's good. In the evening, it's not good. Today, you are up. Tomorrow, you are down. What is the cause? All right, let me tell you the cause. You see your spiritual life today, Sunday. Very ah, you are highly anointed. As you are here now, your anointing is high. Before Tuesday in the evening, ah, you are like blind Bartimaeus, son of David. Have mercy on me. What is the cause? It is the way you were converted. Your conversion. Check your conversion. The way you knew Christ. The way you were converted. Check it out. When you know Christ in a desperate way, desperate, it will not last. It will take special grace for it to last. But when you know Christ because that touch came. That touch, that hand came and said, follow me. None of the apostles follow Christ without that touch. Without that call. No one. Jesus met Peter. Follow me. Matthew, follow me. This, follow me. That is how he was calling them. You don't follow Christ in a desperate way. Let me just follow this Jesus. It's like my first son is going astray. My first son is going astray. Let me follow God and see what is happening. With that kind of conversion, your spiritual life will be like a wave. Today is okay. Tomorrow is not okay. Today is okay. Tomorrow is not okay. But when you follow Jesus, because he touched you, because the hand touched you, Take that song. He touched me. Mm. Joy that mm. fills my soul. Something happens and now I know he touched me and made Can 
Are you getting? Listen. He touched me. Make me whole. Heal me. Deliver me. I serve him. When you want to follow God in a desperate way, according to your own strength, your spiritual life will be like this. But when he touch you, when Jesus touch you, the man of Calvary, when he touch you, my dear sister, when he comes in your heart, before men, you will be like nothing. But before ancients of days, you are a pillar. Before men, ah, why is this man serving God now like a madman? You are nothing. But before ancients of days, you are a pillar. A pillar that stands and no wind can shake. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, how did you come about Christ? I can't hear you. It's a question which needs answer. Oh. You speak in tongues. If that tongues did not come because it touched you, it has no influence. In spirit, there is no copyright. There is inspiration. We don't copy in spirit. We are inspired. Inspiration, not copyright. When God touch you, you have strength to overcome the devil. The devil will know you that this one is touched by God. That is where the Bible says, touch not my anointed. When you are touched, you are anointed by God. The devil knows you. Say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Your conversion is in the mouth. Just calling the name of Jesus. The devil asked the, 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 the men of God who were practicing it by their five senses. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You, who are you? You are not converted. To love Christ and to serve Christ does not mean you are genuinely converted. No. To love Christ and to serve Christ does not mean you are genuinely converted. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. A man can love Christ and is serving Christ, but is not converted. That is why we have elders that smoke, but they love to do the work of God. We have men of God that are drunk, but they like to preach the Bible. So, to love God and to serve God does not mean you are genuinely converted. That is when I knew that to serve him, to love him, does not mean you are genuinely converted. Because you will meet many of us on the way who drink and smoke. To love Christ is different. To serve him does not mean you are genuinely converted. Many of us, we are, we are serving him here. We love him. If I call you now, do you love God? You just start to say, I surrender. If I call you now, I say, do you love God, sir? You say, oh, this God, I will die with him. It is a good confession. But it needs to come out from a good conversion. Your conversion matter. Are you converted? Your conversion matter. God touch you. When God touch you, he converts you. When Saul, Saul was a killer, a murderer, and he was on his way to go and murder, God touched him. And Saul became opposed to Paul. And he never went back to his old life. So thank you very much.